Hey, thanks for stopping by. I've had a lot of requests to do another video on doing jigs. Since I needed to do a bigger jig for my larger lager for these um, JDS car chargers, or uh, cell phone chargers, excuse me, I wanted to go ahead and show you how I did it. One thing that I see is you can make your jigs as fancy and as elaborate as you want, or you can make them very simple and very fast and easy to use. I'm going to step you through the entire process today on how to make this jig. This makes, uh, 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 gives the ability for me to do 18 products at a time. I'm using it on a, a, a Thunder Nova 35 100 watt laser. And just a few minutes, we're going to go ahead and create this jig, go ahead and get it cut out, and I'm going to show you how to use it. Um, don't make jigs more hard than they really need to be. They're fairly simple once you understand the concept behind them. I'm going to take a piece of uh, quarter inch plywood that I had lying, laying around. It was 24 inches by 24 inches. We're going to measure up the product. I'm going to lay it out right quick. And then when we're all done and we've got it cut out, I'm going to show you how to take that template move it into your art library so it's available to you anytime you need it. All you've got to do is drag it out on your desktop, plop in your uh, artwork, and in mere minutes you can be ready to go. It takes me probably 30 to 45 seconds to set this jig up and have it ready to use. So let's go to Lightburn. I'll show you the simple steps that we're going to follow. This is not going to be anything fancy, but these are very effective. Let's go to Lightburn. Before we get to designing this jig for these uh, power banks, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the components that we're going to use before we get into actually uh, drawing this out. Um, wanted to cover these things just to save us a little time, make sure it's very clear on what we're going to use. So I went ahead and I, I, I named or I generated a title that we can put at the top of our jig. It's always helpful if you name your jig just so it makes sense to you on what that jig is for. Um, if you got, It's important that you do that. I've got just a, a horizontal line, both uh, the, uh, the name and the horizontal line and the target are all engraved layers. This is going to be something that I'm going to be engraving on the top of the jig. I've got a horizontal uh, reference line here that you'll see where we're going to use that here in just a little bit. I've got a half inch round finger hole. You're going to see how I incorporate that into the template. Anytime you have something that sits in a template, you need to have the ability to dig it out. And so I typically try to put just a little finger hole either on the end of the product or the top or bottom, just somewhere where you can actually dig it out. It's just easier to get it out, and make, that way you don't have to worry about moving your jig. Um, so this is the the actual dimension of the product. So what I did is I took my uh, digital uh, calipers and measured the width and the height, and that's what I put up here for dimension. So our actual product. Uh, dimensions are 5.95 inches by 2.899 inches. And by the time you cut this out, the kerf of the laser will give it enough room so it'll drop in nicely. Um, and then this is the engravable area of the, uh, of the uh, charging bank. So I, you know, guesstimated about where I want to make sure that my boundaries are that I want for... Uh, that engravable area, and this is actually going to sit inside here. Um, and that way, uh, when I bring in my artwork, it's going to snap into the center of this tool layer, and uh, it's going to be much easier to use. So I've got a tool layer. This is my cut layer. I've got a tool layer for an engravable area. I've got a target offset box that I just uh, did inch and a half by, or excuse me, inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. You'll see how I use that here in just a little bit. And then I just made myself a, a, a simple target. And actually that one looks like that. Okay, doesn't have to be fancy. I find that if you make your targets uh, fairly about the, uh, the size of the red dot, when you do your targets, if you line up your uh, red dot properly, it almost disappears if you get the size of your target properly. The size of this particular target, if I ungroup that, 
oops, that is 0 0.0584. And that works out really well uh, for being able to line things up. So that's the size of the intended target. And so those are the components. Other than the uh, outline of the 24 inch by 24 inch piece of plywood, you're going to see how this comes together. Let's check it out. Now that we've got our rectangle done, we're going to go ahead and start to put this jig together. So I'm going to take my finger hole and I'm going to go ahead and zoom here. I'm going to grab my finger hole. I'm going to grab the center move handle and snap it to the middle of that product rectangle. I'm going to hold the shift key down and select my rectangle. Once both of those are selected, I'm going to come over here to the weld tool. I'm going to select weld. That's going to go ahead and give us now this uh, finger hole bump out is part of the cutout. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to select the engraving area that we've determined for this product. And I'm going to snap it right into the uh, middle here. And I'm going to go ahead and group these. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull this over onto our outline of our plywood. I'm going to start this rectangular array tool. I'm going to want three columns, X, one, two, three. I want half an inch spacing between this point and this point. And then same for the Y spacing, half an inch. And I want six rows. And now I've got six down, three across. That gives me 18. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go ahead and select all 18 product windows. Didn't get them all. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and group those. Then I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the outline of the uh, plywood and say center. And at this point, the only thing I've got to do, I'm going to change the color of this plywood outline because I'm not actually cutting anything right here. This is just the outline of the plywood to show me as a reference. So I'm going to turn that black because that's my frame layer. And at this point, we've got our product windows laid out. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add the naming convention, the horizontal uh, marker, and some targets. And we'll be ready to go ahead and cut this out. Next, we'll go ahead and add the rest of the components. So I'm going to go ahead and add my title for my jig. I'm just going to drag that in, mark my perimeter, let it uh, be centered. That's good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and select my horizontal marker. And I want that to be centered somewhere in the middle here. OK. And we'll just drag that in so we don't engrave off the wood. Good. The next thing I'm going to do is I've generated these four squares are inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter, and I've turned them into a blue tool layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap them each in each corner, and that's how I'll set my target. So I'm going to select the first one, wait till that bullseye shows up, maybe. And then I'm going to snap it right in that corner. Same way with the rest of them. So I'm going to come down here, snap it to this corner down here. Snap it to this corner down here. One more. Snap to this corner up here. Whoops. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. And we'll snap it this corner. OK. Then we can take this target. And we'll duplicate it and snap it there. 
make sure this is grouped. Duplicate it, snap it in this corner, duplicate it one more time, snap it in this corner, take our last one, snap it in this corner. Zoom in just to make sure everything's all lined up. You really don't have to have these targets. Uh, you could put these targets anywhere. It really doesn't matter. I just like to have things uniform is the only reason why we're doing that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple extra targets right down here on this horizontal line. They don't have to be lined up. They can be just anywhere. They're just a reference. So when you start verifying your placement on your laser, you can use these to make sure that you're completely lined up. Okay. And literally, that's all there is to making a jig. So what will happen is I will put this in the laser. I will cut out these product uh, holes with the finger holes in them. These blue targets will be engraved along with the name. And at that point, uh, what we'll do next is I'll show you how to take this from a, once you get it cut out and you don't need these cut layers anymore, I'm going to go ahead and turn this whole template into a tool layer so you don't have to worry about any of this going uh, to the laser. And the only thing that will go to your laser is the artwork. Okay, we got it all cut out. Got it cleaned up. You can see we've got a nice target there. We've got our name. Our targets, our targets are nice and bold. We've got our horizontal line. We've got our little cutouts for all of our finger holes to dig the product out. And um, now, now that we know that this jig is good, the other thing is here, let's just take a quick look. Let's drop one of these chargers in there. Fits nice, doesn't wiggle. I can get it out, stick my finger in there, dig it out. We're good. So. We can now take this, since we won't have to cut out another one, typically what I'll do is I'll save this template and then I'll duplicate uh, the drawing and take the duplicated drawing and turn it completely into a tool layer. And you'll see why here in just a minute. So we're going to go uh, back to Lightburn now that we've got this all cut out and it looks good, the product fits. We'll go ahead and, and uh, get a little bit more work done in Lightburn and then I'll show you how to Line this up in your laser quick and easy. Let's go back to Lightburn. Now that we've verified uh, that this jig is cut out properly, it looks good. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to duplicate this just in case I need it again. I'm going to just drag it off here. And then what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to highlight it. And I'm going to turn it all to a tool layer. Um, the nice thing about doing this is you don't ever have to worry about any of this going to your laser. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and upload this into my art library. So I have the ability to just drag it on my desktop, line it up in my laser, drop my, drop my uh, artwork in it, and engrave. So with this all converted to a tool layer. I'm going to go ahead and go up. I'm going to select Jig Template. I'm going to come in and say Import Graphic from Project. If you haven't or you're not using an art library in Lightburn, I have a video. I'll put a tag up above uh, if you want to know how to build one of these from scratch. Um, they're hugely helpful. I wouldn't be without it. So I'm going to go ahead and import this. I'm going to go ahead and indicate that that's my charger and say OK. And now you can see I've already got two of them in there, but I've got I've got one now in there. If I come in here and I delete this one and let's say that I'm all ready to go, maybe I'll just save this and I'll start a brand new file. And I'm ready to uh, engrave some chargers. I drag this in and we're going to be ready to set this up in our laser and you're going to see how easy it is. Check this out. So we're going to go ahead and drive to our first target. I'm going to go ahead and use the laser position by clicking it. Make sure it turns red and then I'm going to zoom into that first target 
upper left hand corner and I'm going to click it. And when I do, the laser head is going to come over here and it should be right in the middle of that target. Now that I know that target set, I'm going to come down here to the opposite side and see uh, if I'm in alignment there. So I'm going to zoom out, go to the opposite bottom right hand target, go back to my locating tool, and zoom in and select my target. And when I click, the laser head is going to move over to this lower right hand target. And it's right on the money. Now, for some reason, this one was off. You would just hold that upper left uh, corner and swing the bottom of this around until you get it dialed in. And at that point, all you're going to do is just drive around to these other targets just to make sure that we're on the money. So let's go ahead and uh, drive to this one over here, the middle left one. So we'll go ahead and zoom out. Pan over to the middle left target, which is right here. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go to the locating tool. And I'm going to go ahead and click the middle of that target there. And then we're going to follow the laser head over. Bang. You can see that it's dead on. So that's looking good. So you can drive around. You can even uh, drive into these corners. Let's, let's take a corner. So I'll pick a corner. Let's take this corner right here. So I'll go to my laser position tool, zoom into this corner, click it. And you can see that that laser is right in the corner of your template. So now you know your template is set, ready to go. If I had a whole bunch of these to do, I would pin this down good so it doesn't move in any way. And then I can go ahead and just uh, engrave away until I'm done. Realistically, even though this took about 20 minutes to talk to you about it, I can load this template and get the position set in, like I said, less than a minute. And so um, give this a try. One of the only times I use absolute co coordinates, but when it comes to templates, I really like the way it works out. Um, and you can literally make these templates as big as your laser will handle. I could have added another column if I would have wanted to and done 24. So if you've got a larger laser and you want to go with some bigger templates, um, it really doesn't matter how big or small your template is based on what we did. Uh, just having these targets, using absolute coordinates, and then driving to these targets and setting uh, your template underneath that, uh, that'll show you. This laser position tool is very handy uh, when you're using absolute coordinates. I hope this information was helpful, and as always, if you guys would please like and subscribe. And if you like my content, there's a new button next to the share button called the thanks button. If you've gotten something from my content and you'd like to contribute to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you could contribute. I typically use that money to improve uh, the equipment that I'm making these videos with. So appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. Until next time, we'll see you later.